2. Work and the Curse Work was commanded by God in the Dominion Mandate at the beginning of creation. Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 28. Work before the fall was responsible and successful dominion work and blessed of God. The labours of Adam in caring for a garden without tools and with the necessity of making tools and in classifying and naming the animal creation was heavy manual work and also intellectual work, but it was still blessed. It was Adam's opportunity to realise and develop the potential and the implications of the image of God and man. There was also harmony between Adam and Eve and between them and the physical and animal realms. With the fall, however, this peace was shattered. In Genesis chapter 3 verses 14 to 19, we learn of the consequences. First, there is now enmity between the animal world and man. The curse infects all of creation, men and animals alike. Second, the curse infects the relationship between man and the earth, which now can no longer give forth with the same fertility. Thorns and thistles signifies that the harvest from the ground is often very frustrating. Third, the relationship between male and female, between women and also between men, is warped and infected by sin. As a result, work in a fallen world is marked by problems, frustration and troubles. To expect otherwise is foolish. Our problem today is that men fail to see the ramifications of the curse and its effect on work. A practical illustration may be of help. In Williston, North Dakota, Ray Pierce lost his home in November 1983. It was the house he had grown up in on the edge of town, a modest home. Until recently, it was paid for. The city put in various improvements such as sewer lines, street improvements, storm sewers, curbs, gutters, paving and a new water storage facility. The total assessments now exceed $21,881.65. There was also a further assessment for street lighting. To pay for these assessments, in 1978, Pierce took out a $20,000 mortgage on the house, now down to $17,600. However, the payments on the mortgage plus the payments on assessments and interest were greater than he could pay, especially with time lost in a hospital after an accident. Then, too, the sewer line was placed too high for the Pierce house to be able to use it. At the same time, septic tanks have been banned. In consequence, the saving and loan bank repossessed his home. Since the first of the year in Williston, over 120 homeowners have either turned back their deed or were subjected to foreclosure proceedings, and officials say that number continues to climb. In most cases, however, it was a combination of higher taxes, higher interest rates and less income. Pierce found that a city commissioner with property in the same area is not listed on the assessment rules. This case is not unusual. It represents the kind of evil which is commonplace when civil government is godless. It tells us, moreover, of the problems which beset work in a fallen society. The Pierce home represented two generations of work and capitalization. In a very short time, all this was negated and destroyed. We have, today, a humanistic social order which penalises work, wealth and thrift. A godless social order is not only under God's curse, but it also becomes a curse to itself and to others. Let us return to the fact of the curse in Genesis in order to see its significance for us. Prior to man's fall, all his work was under God and in terms of God's directions, God's law word. At the same time, all his relationships were mediated through God. Adam's relationship to Eve, to the animals and to the earth was not a direct one. It was always governed by God's covenant and hence a mediated and governed relationship. 
in submitting to the temptation to be his own God. Genesis chapter 3 verse 5, Adam chose instead to have a direct relationship with all things, an unmediated relationship governed only by his own will and word. However, since all things were made by God, and without him was not anything made that was made, John chapter 1 verse 3, nothing has or can have any existence or being apart from the Lord. Hence, nothing can be apprehended or known without knowing God. Every attempt at an unmediated knowledge leads finally to a pessimism concerning the possibility of knowledge. Similarly, every effort at a direct contact and use leads to a like frustration and ultimate defeat. The world of men is not our creation, nor are animals and the earth. To approach any of them as a god with our own creative word is to move in terms of an insanely evil delusion and assured defeat. In hell, there are no mediated relationships between men and men, and hence no communication. The more mediated our relationships are in Christ, the more productive is our life and work, because the mediated relationship is the governed and directed one. The total providence and power of God are then linked to our lives and activities. We are then in the covenant word of God, of which the Lord says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 11 God's word and work are infallibly successful and efficacious. At the same time, Paul tells us, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labour is not in vain in the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 58 Our work can never be futile when we are in Christ. This is a magnificent affirmation, and it rests on God's absolute sovereignty, predestination and providence. This means that, when we work in and for the Lord, we move out from under the curse into blessings, to the degree of our faithfulness. The two realms, of curses and of blessings, both exist simultaneously. With our conversion, we begin our departure from the world of the curse. We are now members of the new humanity of the last Adam, Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 45 to 47. In Christ, we are born rich, and we can, by faithfulness to him and his law word, lay hold of our inheritance. His law sets forth the premises of blessings as well as of curses. Deuteronomy chapter 28. This means that the problems of our time are, at root, theological problems. We experience a world under the curse because the nations seek an unmediated world. They declare their own independent law word and, in so doing, move more and more into the curse and, in the process, become a curse. Civil government should be a terror to evildoers. Romans chapter 13 verse 3, but it has become instead a terror to the law-abiding. Godly children are an inheritance from the Lord and a blessing. Psalm 127 verse 3, but the ungodly children are a curse. Marriage is intended to be a crowning joy. Psalm 19 verse 5, but it is with the ungodly commonly a disaster and a curse. Work should be man's life, and wonderfully productive. But, for the ungodly, it is under a curse. Our task as Christians is to move ourselves and our society from the realm of curses to the realm of blessings 